State variables that are less than 32 bytes, if possible, will be packed into a single slot. To manually read and write from these state variables, we will need to learn a little bit of bit masking. So in this video, I'll explain some bit masking tricks that we'll need to read and write from state variables that are packed into a single slot. First, I'll briefly explain how state variables are packed into a single slot, and then I'll move on to the bit masking tricks. In the next video, we'll go into the details of how to read and write from state variables that are packed into a single slot. So as an introduction to state variables that are packed into a single slot, let's consider that there is a state variable of bytes 4. So this will be 4 bytes. I've named it B4. And I have another state variable called B2, which occupies 2 bytes. In a single slot, we can store up to 32 bytes. In this case, we have 4 bytes. And then the next state variable has 2 bytes. So these two state variables will be stored in a single slot. The first state variable will be stored in slot 0. This data will be stored all the way to the right of bytes 32. For example, if we represent 32 bytes as 64 characters of hexadecimal strings, then the state variable ab, 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 ab will be stored to the right of this 32 bytes. And then this next state variable b2 will be stored to the left of this ab, 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 ab. So in slot 0, we will get cd, cd, and then followed by ab, 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 ab. And to show you this, I'll compile the contract. And then we'll deploy this contract. And then call the function get. And you can see over here that this 32-byte string ends with cd, cd, ab, 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 ab. The 4 bytes, ab, 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 is the first state variable. And it is stored all the way to the right of this 32 bytes. The next state variable that takes two bytes, cd, cd, is stored right next to this first state variable. So that is what I mean when I said that state variables that are less than 32 bytes, if possible, will be packed into a single slot. In our example, in slot zero of state variable called b4 and two bytes of state variable called b2 are packed into slot zero. And the way the state variables are packed are from right to left. Here is how these two state variables are stored into slot 0. Now let's say that we wanted to use assembly to maybe read the second state variable stored in slot 0, or maybe we wanted to update the first state variable that is stored in slot 0. To do this, we need to learn some bit masking. For example, if you wanted to update this second state variable that is stored in slot 0, this cd cd, then we will need to create a bit masking that looks like this. It is all f's except for these two bytes that we want to update. Over here, they are set to zero. And by creating this bit mask, we will be able to clear out just this part of the data. Now to be able to create this bit masking, you'll need to know other tricks with bits. So the first trick that I'll show you is how to create a sequence of ones followed by zeros. And in our example, we will be using 256 bits. So this means that we have a sequence of zeros and ones having the length 256. And we're going to create a bit mask where counting from the right, we have all ones to a certain point, And from there, we have all zeros. I'll call this function test mask public peer returns. And we'll return bytes 32. I'll call this mask. And we'll do this inside assembly. So assembly. For this example, let's say that we wanted to create 16 bits of ones. So this will be 16 bits or sequence of ones having the length 16. To this variable mask, we will create a mask and then assign it. The way we will create 16 bits of ones followed by all zeros is first by creating all zeros except at the 16th position, we'll have a one. And here we're working with zero index. So this will be index zero index 1, index 2, so on, and this will be index 16. So to put a 1 at the 16th index, what we can do is use the bitwise operator, shift left 16 times 1, shift 1 16 times to the left, and we'll have a 1 at the 16th position, and everything else will be a 0. So, so far, what this represents is this. To turn this into all zeros, and then followed by 16 bits of ones, what we have to do is simply subtract one from this. Subtract one, sub one. Okay, let's try this out. 
our vehicle to us to compile the contract. And then we'll deploy the contract. And then call the function test mask. And this is the mask that we get. 16 bits is 2 bytes. 2 of these hexadecimal character is also 1 byte. So 4 of these will be 2 bytes or 16 bits. And if you convert this into binary, you'll get this number. 16 bits of 1s followed by all zeros. If you wanted to have 32 bits of 1s followed by all zeros, then all you have to do is change this 16 to a 32. And if you wanted to have 128 bits of 1s starting from the right and going to the left, and then followed by all zeros, what you'll have to do is change this to a 128, and so on. So now we know how to create a sequence of 1s followed by zeros, but what if we wanted this 1s to be somewhere in the middle, so that we would have something like zeros, a sequence of zeros, followed by a sequence of 1s, and then followed by a sequence of zeros again. And for this example, we'll be using 16 bits of 1s, and for the zeros, let's say 32 bits. So we will have 32 zeros followed by 16 ones, and then the rest will be all zeros. To start off with, I'm gonna first copy this code, then I'll rename this to test shift mask. So at this point, what this code will do is this. This code will create 16 ones followed by all zeros. Now to create sequence of bits so that we start off with 32 bits of zeros followed by 16 bits of ones. So what we want is this. To create this, all we have to do is shift this part that we created in the last example, shift it over to the left by 32. So I'll type shift left by 32 with the bit mask that we created in the previous example. Okay, let me show you an example of what we have so far. So I'll hit Ctrl S to compile the contract, and then deploy the contract again. And then we'll call the function test shift mask. Copy the mask that was returned. And this is what we have. So notice that this FFFF matches the FFFF from the previous example. So this is 16 bits of ones. And before that, we also had some zeros. How many zeros do we have? We have one, two, four, six, eight, eight zeros. Two of these represent one byte. And we have eight zeros, so we have four bytes of zeros, which is equal to 32 bits of zeros. Okay, so all we did was first created a sequence of ones, like in the previous example, and then we shifted over this mask to the left by however many bits that we wanted. In our example, we shifted this mask over to the left by 32 bits. Okay, for the last example, what if we wanted to turn this around? We have this so far, but what if we wanted to invert it? So for example, we have 111, 111, followed by 16 bits of zeros, and then followed by 32 bits of ones. So let's start off by copying this code, and then how do we change this code so that we can create something like this? I'll rename this function as test not mask. Currently, this code will create this mask. The mask that we want to create in this example is the opposite. We want all bits to be 1s except for the 16 bits over here, followed by 32 bits of 1s again. In hexadecimal, this is what we want. Okay, to create this mask, all we have to do is invert all the zeros and 1s. And we can do that by simply wrapping this whole code with a not. Not will invert the zeros and 1s, of this mask, and this will produce this mask. Okay, let's give it a try. Compile the contract, deploy again, and then call the function test not mask. And this is what we get. Okay, and it matches the mask that we wanted to create. So in this video, I showed you examples of how to create some bit masks. In the next video, we'll be using some of these bit masking tricks to read and write from state variables that are packed into a single slot.